Christian talk with a Caribbean twist. Iron sharpens iron, with Linda Casimir and friends. Of Iron Sharp and Iron, this is Linda Casimir and friends. Tonight, I am posing a question to the team. When you think of wisdom, what do you think? So before we begin, we are going to open up with prayer. Son, you want to open us up? Yeah, no problem. Okay, go ahead, son. Lord, we come to you in prayer tonight, Lord, thanking you for bringing us through this week, Lord. Thank you for watching over us, protecting us, keeping us all safe, Lord. Thank you for giving us a platform where we can gather and celebrate, learn, and talk about you, Lord. Praise and worship you. Lord, we ask you to um, to be with us tonight, Lord. Dwell within this group, within our conversation, Lord. We ask you to give us the wisdom to not only do your will, Lord, but to uplift your name, Lord. Lord, we just ask you to bless and keep us all safe, Lord. We send our prayers out to all the families that need it, all the people that need it, Lord. We ask you to, um, to just put on our hearts what what is meant to be lord we ask you to guide our words guide our thoughts lord we ask you all these things in your son jesus name amen amen amen, amen. amen. okay so when you think of wisdom because the bible has several books of wisdom we all know about the book of psalms ecclesiastics proverbs job are just some of the books that is filled with wisdom, you know, and some of the book wisdom is personified as an actual person, actually as a female. And it talks about how she cries out in the streets and so on and so forth. But we'll read, we'll read the scripture Psalms about wisdom in a minute, but I'm going to pose a question again to the team. When you think of the word wisdom, what do you think? What do you have suffice and come up with as what wisdom is for you? Who want to go first? I go. When I when I think of wisdom, um, I first think back to uh, oh man, who was it? Who was the king that asked God for wisdom when God offered to give him to King Solomon? I yeah. think back to King Solomon as wisdom could be. Um, could be great but also could be horrible you i look at wisdom as wisdom in in the lord wisdom in what god has planned for you wisdom in all of my actions are according to his path and what he what he lays out for me what i hear from him what he puts on my heart not just like wisdom of the world because that's where you get in trouble. You turn you turn wisdom into knowledge. Mm -hmm. Two different things. Being wise and being knowledgeable are different. So I look at wisdom as decision making to where I can make my decisions according to God's will, according to his word. Okay. Anybody else? How you see wisdom? When you think of wisdom, what do you think? Lana described it really well. That's mm -hmm. kind of pretty much what I was gonna say. Me too. Kind of, it's like wisdom is put your trust in God. I agree. Yeah. Me, that's to me. That's what wisdom is. You put your trust in God. Because there are mm. there are many foolish, smart people. Mm hmm. So wisdom, wisdom is more than just knowledge like of things of this world it's actually like connected it's having that connection with the lord nice. where he can guide you and 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 kind of he places limitations within your within you so even though you have you have when you ask for wisdom he gives you wisdom he gives you knowledge but also with that knowledge comes self-control and like he places he's like um 
I don't even know what the word is, like a barometer. Mm -hmm. that he keeps you from going too far off of either end so that, that you don't get to the point of where you're, you're just so smart that you're too smart for your own good. Mm -hmm. you, know? you feel like you don't get to a point where you feel like, well, geez, you're so smart. You don't even need God anymore. You know, as, yeah. like, as we see so many people start to, to, to do when they start attaining certain levels of, of knowledge. Right. Leaning on the knowledge of this world. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, I, think I think he was. What you say, Franz? I say I think the way Lionel said it was perfect. Uh huh. Right. And you, for, for me, this is just me. We we think wisdom has to do with this world system, our experiences. <laughs> A combination of, of things we go through and things we study and learn equals wisdom. Wisdom comes from God. Anything of this world is 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 knowledge. Knowledge comes from study. Wisdom comes from God. Because you can have all the knowledge and like Francine say, you can be as smart as you want to be. You could you could be a genius and still ain't wise. You could be the smartest man ever lived on the earth. Head knowledge, study book knowledge, I mean. Not what came from God, like what God did with Solomon, but book knowledge. You know, PhD or higher. And don't have wisdom. As for me, wisdom comes from God. Wisdom comes from God. Anything else is, anything as you lean on in this world is just knowledge or your experiences. So you, you pull in from your own experiences and you weave in something together to make your choices and your decisions. That's not wisdom, that's knowledge or understanding. You understand how this world system works, but you need to learn to understand how the kingdom of heaven works. And that's where wisdom kicks in. You know, there's a scripture where um, it talks about, and what one of you would look it up, where it says, he who... When you ask, when you ask God, He give it to you liberally. My James one, that's James one five. Talking about the um, if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all, without finding fault. There you go. So wisdom, comes, wisdom comes from heaven because you have to ask God for wisdom. Wisdom is not an earthly thing. Wisdom comes from heaven, or oh, that scripture wouldn't say what it says. If you lack wisdom and you want wisdom, ask God. And he will give it to you liberally. And you have to have ask for understanding too. Because to get the wisdom you and be able to understand and know how to apply it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In in mm -hmm. different different situations in your life that you, you're going through and try not to, and it's hard because we're human beings and y'all chipping if y'all agree or don't agree. But for me, it's hard to not muddy the water of godly wisdom with my earthly experiences and my earthly knowledge it's hard to keep the one from blending into the other, you know, so that I know how to make wise decisions and wise choices. Like this week, I had a situation where this person, was it yesterday? 
this person at the office and he's a sick person. He's sick. He, he's suffering with stuff. And he must have been having a bad day. And he came over to my cubicle and he was yelling at me because I had the speaker on doing a meeting and I had, was training someone. So I wanted her to head in the, the conversation. And he came over and he was yelling. I didn't even realize because because he's always a jovial, making joke person. So when I turned to hear what he was saying, I thought he was joking because he does stuff like that. But it didn't really click. And I'm so glad that it didn't click in my mind that this dude yelling at you. Because if it had clicked in my mind in the natural, that conversation would not have end well. Because you know how your flesh reacts to things, especially when you get caught off guard. You react and you go off. Yeah. So it didn't click in my mind. This dude actually yelling at you. The young lady was sitting next to me. She was looking at me like, is he for real? And then he walked away. And I put on the headphones and, you know, and I continued with the conversation. But when I got off the phone, she said, Miss Linda, you realize what he did? I said, I just not realizing what he did. But I sat there because, let me tell you all something. I had to literally sit on myself. I had to sit on myself while well, my flesh wanted to get up and walk over to his cubicle and tear him up. The Holy Spirit kicked in. And the Spirit of God was like, uh-uh. You have a testimony that you cannot rip up because someone who have not even half the testimony you built. Think about it, Linda. Think about it well before you choose what you're going to do. And I still, in my flesh, still want, wanted to push past that, you know. I still wanted to push past that because you know the flesh. My flesh was like, you need to get up and go over there and ask him if he lost his mind who he think he was talking to. And I was this close. I was this close to the point where I was heading in his direction. And the Holy Spirit had to take, literally grab me and pull me aside. And all the rest of that day, yesterday. And you know, during the rest of the day, I was talking to the lady in the other cubicle next to me, having a Christian conversation. You know, he walked up to us and joined the conversation. Mm. Like he ain't do nothing. And of course, you know, my flesh was pinching me, telling me, you need to tell he want to tell he get he behind from in front of you. But the Spirit of God held me. The Holy Spirit held me and was like, no. Treat him like he did nothing. Treat him like he said nothing. And that's exactly what I did. I acted like this man did not go off on me. And it was only four of us in the office yesterday. I acted like he didn't go off on me. I let him join the conversation. He said something towards me. I answered him nice. And at the end of the day, the same lady because she was a witness to him going off. And she came to me and tried to, to kind of like smooth it over. And I was like, kind of like saying he got this thing about, you know, noise and any noise he hear, he, just like trying to make excuses for him. But at the end of the day, you know, she looked at me and she said, I, I, let me tell you something. I thank God for wisdom. She looked at me and she said, Linda, I'm not where you are. You have shown every one of us over the years hmm. where you are in God. There's none of us that don't see it. There's nobody that don't see it, Linda. And I see it even more today, after today. Hmm. And I see to myself, see, if I had listened to flesh, 
-hmm. and gone over there and tear him one. My flesh would have feel good, but for how long? Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Then I'd have feel shame because I know I pushed past the Holy Spirit who was restraining me to satisfy my flesh. Mm -hmm. But I use wisdom from heaven. And ladies and gentlemen, that is hard to do. Especially when they catch you off guard. Reset. Women's Retreat. Reset and set free. Hosted by Linda Casimir. Let me tell you something. That's where we have to get to that point. You have to get to that level of humility. So that even when it's off guard, we still react in a Christ like way. Mm -hmm. We have, to just, we have to to starve the flesh and not feed it to the point where our knee jerk reaction is a godly one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's where that's that's kind of where I am now. That even if somebody come at me sideways, my reaction is a godly reaction. That's usually where I first go instead of firing back or snapping back or you know that right there my first mm -hmm. reaction is and if it my first reaction is to listen to see what's going on and think about it before I respond mm -hmm. and if it's too much to where it gets to me and and I I kind of it, it just gets, you know, it hits me deeper instead of bouncing off. I'll go and I'll listen, I'll either, you know, listen to the Bible or listen to my my worship playlist. And then I, I'll go that route instead of firing back right away. Mm -hmm. So once you practice it enough, it becomes normal to where you, even if you realize that Hey, did they just do that? It's not, it's still not a battle of your flesh. Because once you train your flesh to react that godly way, that that struggle becomes easier. It becomes something that your flesh doesn't even want anymore. Mm -hmm. It's like you fire off at me, like if you just stop all of a sudden out of nowhere, just start yelling at me about something and I'm going to listen and my flesh isn't going to want to fight you and be the you know big man on campus and I got to put you in your place. It's going to be like, what's going on? What's really the issue? Mm -hmm. what's, what's behind the yelling? There's a, there's a problem somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to, me and Franny talk about it all the time at least one of us has to be grounded yeah right? because if both if both parties fly off the rail then you're only going going down from there so just just learning just reading the bible reading about um like i brought up solomon and his wisdom you know he asked god for wisdom and god gave him wisdom but that wisdom isn't, it doesn't go far if you can't use it properly or you, you're not strong in other areas of your life to where you can use that wisdom in, in the right way and not let it amplify your other, um, your other weak areas. Because he took that wisdom and yeah, he was wise. And you see the trouble, you see what he got himself into mm -hmm. from being so wise. So it's not just, I, I don't look at wisdom as something that, you know, we need wisdom and wisdom, you'll be good with wisdom. You got to have the whole package. Like you were saying, you got to have the whole package. You got to have wisdom. You got to have understanding. You have to have patience. Mm -hmm. you, have, you have to practice everything. 
Yeah. You can't be strong in one area and weak in the other because that strength is going to amplify that weakness. Yep. Because you're strong in one area, enemy knows how to how to how to push your button in that other area. Yeah, you might you know you you got that godly wisdom, right? You know what to do when you need to do it. But if you got um if you struggle with being vindictive, you're just gonna be a wise, vindictive person. Mm-hmm. You're gonna know how to cut somebody to their core because you're wise. So that's what that's why I say wisdom. It's it's that double edged sword depending on how you use it and where you are. If you're asking God for just wisdom, or if you're asking God to be with you and make wise decisions according to His will, according to what He would want, according to His teaching. Mm-hmm. A lot of people want wisdom, but you, wisdom could wake up a monster, could turn you into a monster. And that's with heavenly wisdom. Well, let me read. Let me read what the Bible says mm-hmm. with what you just said, Lionel. James chapter three, seventeen through eighteen says, "But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy." and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. So even what you just said, Lionel, oh about you could use that wisdom and, 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 you know, turn it the other way. Mm-hmm. The wisdom that comes from heaven, true with godly wisdom, is pure and peace loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit. Right. That's that's the wisdom. Ungodly wisdom too. Right, it's ungodly wisdom, yeah. Right. That's that's and yeah, I agree. That's the wisdom, the godly wisdom is that's correct but if you don't know how to use that wisdom you could turn something that's pure and something that's godly into something that's not because that's how god gives it to you as a gift so but once we receive without repentance. Without repentance yeah yeah but once we receive that gift how many how many blessings do you get from god that you turn that that someone mm-hmm. turns into the opposite turn god's blessing into a something simple. I've been there. So I see wisdom. Yeah, once it comes from God, it is pure and it is all those things he explained. But the issue is us as people, right? We it's been, that and we muddy that water. Yeah, it's being pure. It be it's being poured into a dirty vessel. Yep. And it could get tainted. Mm-hmm. If the That's vessel right. isn't clean. So the vessel don't stay clean because it's gonna be clean when you pour it. But for mm-hmm. the, the vessel have to make sure it stays clean, right? So that all those attributes stays there, right? You know? So and yeah, because, it, go ahead. To keep it clean, you have to be strong in those other areas of all of his teaching. You know, not a not a cookie cutter religion, mm-hmm. not a not a cookie cutter faith. You you gotta you gotta uphold all those areas and try to strengthen yourself in all those areas. You're not gonna be perfect, but being able to have a hold and to turn God, turn to God when you struggle in those areas, that's that's all you need. You just need to be able to turn to him instead of turning to your flesh when you yeah. struggle in those areas. And that's hard. Uh, ooh, it's, it starts out hard, though. It starts yeah. out hard, but it's like a muscle. It's like a yeah. muscle. You you're not gonna you're not gonna walk your first day in the gym and bench 250 pounds. You're gonna bench 50, and then 60, and then 75 until you work your way up after training. 
to 275 and you and you look at people who's in the gym who you can tell they only work on their upper body not their legs <laughs> how strong is your upper body if i could kick you in your leg and your buckle <laughs> alabaster box the unveiling experiencing the supernatural realms of god Train my hands for war. Reclaiming your territory and purpose in God. Soul Food Devotionals. Nourishment for the heart. Where angels tread. The unseen realms of God. Available on Amazon.com and wherever books are sold. Alabaster Box Ministries Linda Casimir package you need to Listen, you need to work out all i, I yeah. always notice that <laughs> yeah, and, and you can see it with some with with some people's faith and you know how they live their life how they live their life you can tell that oh they're really strong they're really strong in this area but you know you they turn the corner and they cussing you out like like there's no tomorrow putting you down making you feel worthless mm -hmm. and in another area or they're really good in uplifting and bringing you up but you look at how they treat you know their kids or or stuff like that but if you can look and you see those who've been exercising all of those muscles maybe they might not be able to to be the strongest in all areas but they're well balanced in each because they work out each muscle and it becomes easier over time and i'm a testament to that it's a struggle at first especially from the person i've been to turning my life around and being saved but my wife had to get used to it she only knew the old person get used to it the person I am now and it takes time and it takes me being able to humble myself and listen and mm -hmm. making mistakes and knowing that I make mistakes and understanding and exercising all those muscles to really get to the point to where it's second nature now now if something happens or I make a mistake and it really upsets her and she fires off at me I can really think about it instead of firing back or instead of putting myself down that was something that I used to put myself down when I make a mistake mm -hmm. but instead I turn to God and I figure out how I can be better or I I instead of making I still do it sometimes instead of making some knee-jerk reaction and saying oh I do this this and this I really think about it and think about the root cause and what's going on and what's happening before I make a decision, you know, before I talk to God and make a decision on what to do next or how to react or do I need to change something or is, is it what I think it is that's causing a problem or is it something deeper? You know, but after you, after you exercise it, I mean, it's, it'll take a while and it's not easy. And sometimes you may have those moments but those moments will come far and a few between compared to before because it it starts to become it starts to become like breathing. Nobody has to think about breathing. If this is something that we all can relate to, driving your car, right? You drive your car and something, uh, let's say, let's say uh, a bug, a big bug, or something flies at your windshield and hits it everybody blinks 
like it's gonna fly through the windshield and hit them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's just a reaction because your body's trained that if you're not in that car and something flies at you, even though it's, it's crazy because even the smallest piece of, of dirt, I don't know if you ever noticed it, before something more times out of out of nine, before something flies into your eye, you blink and you kind of mm-hmm. catch catch it. It hits your eyelid before it flies into your eye. Huh. It's crazy because I've noticed that and that's just something that your body has trained itself since you were young. So no matter what happens, if something comes close to your eye, you automatically blink without thinking about it. And that's how we have to be with with our faith and with everything that we're training ourselves. You do it so much to where your body, your brain fills in that gap. Yeah. Before you even have to think about it. Because there's a lot of times that you do things without even thinking about it. And then you have to go back with like, you know what? I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. I did, I, It caught me off guard and I just, I shot out. Just like, remember when you were saying you're glad that you didn't, God knows you're glad that you didn't hear it when he first said it. Because it might have caught you off guard and you might have fired back at him. You know, God knows. And at some point you'll get to the point to where something that'll hit you right catch you off guard and the first thing you'll be thinking about is like you did today something might not be right with them he doesn't usually do this or that person they don't really act like that mm-hmm. what's going on you look deeper instead of thinking like is he talking to me yeah and i know he ain't talking to me exactly you'll be <laughs> like i'll be th- i think like okay something's going on like what's wrong that usually doesn't happen everything's usually good that's where that's where my mind will go first before it's firing back yeah and and yeah that's just i think i got a little off topic of wisdom but that's just that's just another muscle you have to train wisdom is just part of the package one of the boxes yeah, it's all like people inter- like. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, sis. No, I was gonna say it's all inter. It's all interconnected. Like you need, you need the knowledge and the understanding, um, for wisdom to come into play. Because wisdom basically teaches you or shows you how to, and when to use your with the knowledge and understanding that you have. Mm-hmm. So it's like you gonna know. What's a good example of that? You, you actually made some good examples too, but just no, for example, use the, the scripture, for example, where it says a soft answer turns away wrath. Mm-hmm. That's wisdom. Mm-hmm. Wait, you said a soft what? A soft answer turns away wrath. Oh, okay. So like that's wisdom. Like, because knowledge, your, your knowledge and your understanding like, oh wait, my knowledge and understanding is this person is yelling at me and is being nasty to me. So my understanding and my own comprehension is I'm going to meet them with that same energy. Whereas wisdom will be like, "Mm -mm, answer softly. And the whole thing will die down. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the more, the more, like, um, the more I thought about it, I was like, he could have been in in serious pain that day. Mm-hmm. Because like I said, he he's sick. He could have been in pain mm-hmm. and to, to his threshold of pain may have broke for him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I could have get up in flesh and go over there and tell him one, I gotta feel good. But what damage would I have done to him? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know on what damage I would have done to my testimony. Mm-hmm. And also, when people are in pain like that, when it's when it becomes chronic, it does a lot to them mentally. And even if he wasn't, even if that day he wasn't in pain, he could have been having a good day as far as pain goes. But emotionally and mentally, he could have been at his breaking point. 
Mm-hmm. And if you had reacted in the flesh, you don't know how that would have affected him, you know, how it would have, it could have pushed him beyond, you know, pushed him beyond his breaking point and mm-hmm. just sent him spiraling. So, right, right, right. Train my hands for war, reclaiming your purpose and territory in God. Alabaster Box, The Unveiling, Experiencing the Supernatural Realms of God, Where Angels Tread, The Unseen Realms of God, available on Amazon.com and all online book outlets. Linda Casimir, Alabaster Box Ministries. It, it was a lesson for me. It was That was a true eye-opening lesson for me as far as wisdom, you know. How do you use wisdom that comes from God? Because satisfying the flesh, it's not worth it. Temporary. It, it's very temporary. And then you're gonna have to end up going and apologizing. But you've already but you've already caused a rip. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's gonna take a long time to heal if it ever do heal. Yeah. So it's not think, worth it. You can apologize, but you can't undo it. Right. Make, make them forget it. Correct. All right. And think about it. Um, firing back, you'll struggle with that. And then if that's something you do all the time, apologizing might be something else that you struggle with. Because if you if that's something you struggle with and you haven't exercise that muscle to control it or to be more empathetic or to calm down and really think about what's going on that's a lot of apologizing if it's a struggle and that could lead to you just saying you know what I I don't even feel like apologizing he was wrong you know that brings that into my well he was wrong he came firing at me why do I need to apologize he needs he actually needs to apologize to me you know, it gets you into that frame of thinking and yeah. then, then you start to spiral. Right. And then you start to hold on to it. And now every time you see him, you see this time he yelled at you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you feel justified. And it gets to a point where years go by and you don't like this person. You don't even know why you don't like this person. Mm-hmm. It's because years before he yelled at you and you just decided from that moment that that's how you were going to see him as the person that you don't like because he yelled at you and you waiting for this apology that never came and he done forgot about it and you done forgot about it, but you just know that you don't like him. Right. That's how those, that's how those relationships um, form where you have people that you don't like and you can't even remember why you don't like them. Mm-hmm. Yep. Everybody Please. thinks wisdom is just a it makes you think that wisdom is just this super thing that once you get wisdom you're good you got wisdom you're wise you know everything tells us you know be wise you got to look for the wise man the wise one is is the one with the with the knowledge the wise man knows all you know what I mean? You got to be like the wise man. Look toward the wise. But people really don't understand what wisdom and what being wise is. They use it as a as a status, as as something that puts you to the top because you're wise. People should look to you. When I don't, that's that. That's not what it is. It's in the decisions you make, how you live your life, how you lead your life, how you lead others, how you raise your kids, how you treat your wife. All of that is wisdom. Yep. Wisdom could save you a lot of heartache and headache too. Oh my gosh, what? Yep. It will save you a lot of heartache and headache. Yeah. With your finances, you have the you have the knowledge and the understanding to know, oh, I got X amount of money in the bank. All the bills are paid. 
hmm, knowledge will be like, yeah, you know what? All of us are paid, so let's just go splurge. Wisdom gonna come in and tap you on your shoulder and be like, um, you gonna have bills again in about two weeks. <laughs> so uh, you uh, gonna start <laughs> this away. <laughs> yeah, you know? Right around the corner. Oh, what? Okay. <laughs> I just say this. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Yes. So wisdom comes in and, and gives you insight and help you think about future. Mm-hmm. You know? And then when it comes to, to relationships, wisdom, same thing, comes and taps you on your shoulder, like, yeah, I know he cute, and he looked like he got all his duckies in a row, but have you seen how he treated his mama? Right. You know? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Perhaps you want to read the verse uh, that you have on wisdom? Sure. I'm going to read from Proverbs 4. It's Proverbs 4. Chapter four, I'm sorry, chapter four, verse four through nine says, let me read from chapter three, from verse three. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in sight, in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words, keep my commands and live, get wisdom, get understanding, do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt Mm -hmm. her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place you, sorry, she will place on your head an ornament of grace, a Mm -hmm. crown of glory she will deliver to you. Wow. I love that. The part, part that story. gets me, the, the part that jumps up to me is in all you're getting, get mm-hmm. understanding. So it's in, say, it, no matter what, no matter what you have, make sure that's the principal thing you try to achieve. And this is coming from his father. Mm-hmm. This is coming from the king, the richest person in the land, to his son. In all you're getting, get understanding. It's like all this earthly stuff, all the treasures and the palaces and and the wives. And no, that's not the thing you should be reaching for. Reach for wisdom, reach for understanding, reach for knowledge. Soul Food, a daily devotional available on Amazon.com and wherever books are sold. Iron Sharpens Iron, a talk show with a Caribbean twist. Reset. Women's Retreat. A time to relax and connect with God. Alabaster Box Ministries. Linda Casimir. Yep. For real. And learn, learn from what you go through. Don't just, don't just go through it. Learn to pick it apart, which is what I'm doing with that situation. And I'm getting, I'm understanding. And I'm growing in knowledge. Because I, I learned so much lessons from when it happened yesterday morning to right now. I've been picking apart, picking apart that, picking apart that, and, and seeing how much my flesh, my carnal, natural man 
still so very reactive. When I thought I had gotten past that, I seriously thought I had gotten past that, to tell you all the truth, as I sit in this chair, I thought I had gotten past that. I thought I was like, right there on, on, on the next step. And the only reason I was on the next step or thought I was on the next step because I wasn't tried. Mm -hmm. And I got tried yesterday. I got tried. And I saw girl of the flesh are yours. Were you so serious? No, 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 I was agreeing with you. Yeah. That flesh of yours, she's still very active and reactive. Mm -hmm. she, she still need to stay under the wings of God because she's still a mess. But I'm glad that even though God showed me she's very much alive, she's controlled and restrained by the Holy Spirit. Even though she's very much alive. She, she is... This is just me. Your flesh will never totally die as a human being. What no. Paul say? Paul say the things I want to do, I don't, I can't, I don't do. And the things I don't want to do, I'm doing. Who can deliver me from this thing called flesh? So your flesh will never totally die. It can be restrained by the Holy Spirit when you give him the control and you stop trying to drive that car and let him control it so he can restrain your flesh. How many times we push past the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, knowing we push past him, push, push past seeing him. We feel that restraint. Don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yes, I said it. Go ahead. We die to our flesh daily. That's mm -hmm. why you're supposed to die to our flesh daily. So it's like you, you never can you never can feel or never should feel comfortable or never should feel like you've arrived spiritually because we're supposed to be dying to our flesh daily. Because the minute you let your guard down and think you done made it. Mm -hmm. That's the day the devil's going to push that one thing in your way to remind you, you ain't there yet. You ain't going to be there. You ain't going to be daily. there. Right. You die daily. To your is, it, is it the devil or is it God? It, that's true. True. Because when we, when we start to feel like we're, we've, we've achieved we, or we've arrived, that's when the Job complex starts to come in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, I was a king. I was like a king among the people. When I walked down the street, they looked at me in reverence. I worshiped God all day. Who was more honorable? Who was more, who honored God more than me? Who loved the Lord more than me? Why would <laughs> this happen to me? And it's like, God had to remind him. Sorry. You're not quite there yet. You're not mm. where you think you are. Reset. Women's Retreat. Reset and set free. Hosted by Linda Casimir. Just the fact that he said who other God more than him. How he know? There wasn't somebody honoring God more than him. How you? How could you, as a human being, know that? How you? How you could think you the you the, the cat's meow, the spiritual cat's meow? You don't know what's in anybody else's heart before God. So just that alone should have been a clue to him, dude. Check yourself. Check yourself. And just like uh, with your situation, 
it was like I was saying earlier with the muscles you have to exercise. If you didn't exercise your other muscles to know that it was God restraining you and holding you back to listen, then you would have went right on ahead and did it. Mm -hmm. Just because you struggle in an area doesn't mean that you can't make up for it in other areas to help you get by until you get strong in that area. And then maybe the area you're strong in, you might start to struggle with that again, but you're strengthening up this other area, which might help you in the future when you struggle with the, when you're strong with now and, you know, so on and so forth. It's true. And that's, that's, that's part of getting understanding, understanding how the different parts of your wisdom and how to use it and when to use it and how to weave it in with knowledge and understanding all of the, all of it, all of it, all of it to be, to be, um, let me go back to the scripture that I was reading because I don't want to misquote it to be able to be peace loving and considerate, submissive and full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere, to be able to, to bring forth all these different fruits. You know what I mean? To, to have these fruit, these different fruits evident in your life that others can see it and be like, wow. This, this seemed to be attainable. It seems to be very attainable. It's not easy, but it's attainable, you know? So I actually thank God for yesterday. I truly right now, as I sit right here looking at y'all, I am so grateful to God for that incident that happened yesterday. I wasn't grateful yesterday when it happened because I had quite a fight. But I'm grateful now as, as, as I sit on the other side of it, I'm so grateful it happened. I'm so grateful it happened. And I don't, and this is my sincere heart, I don't want him, you know how sometimes we act so holy and, you know, we got restrained and we, we make it and we passed the test. But inside of our heart, we're saying, I hope he feel guilty. Mm -hmm. I hope he's sitting there ashamed of himself. Even though he too shamed to come and say he's sorry, I hope he's too and he's shamed. That is not what I'm feeling right now. Right now, I hope, I hope he don't sit in shame for what happened yesterday. I sincerely hope he don't sit in shame. Sincerely. I don't want him sitting in shame. I don't want him sitting in regret. I don't want him sitting in nothing negative. Nothing. Because I'm good. I came out. And I want him to come out too. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I needed to be confronted in order for me to see what I needed to see. And I am, I'm good. I'm grateful it happened. I really am. I learned. I learned about me even more. I learned about the activeness of this flesh still. You know, and you know how sometimes you get so disappointed in yourself? Mm. This was one time that I don't sit on the other side of it disappointed in myself, right. you know? So therein is victory because I don't sit in disappointment tonight. I don't. I'm glad. God is good. God is good. So when you all go through these things, and you all will, whether by God or, or God allowing the devil to 
bring certain situations to you. And it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard. Especially when you tire you physically, mentally, emotionally drained yourself and tired yourself. Don't use that as an excuse for reacting badly. Alabaster Box, The Unveiling. Experiencing the supernatural realms of God. Train my hands for war. Reclaiming your territory and purpose in God. Soul Food Devotionals. Nourishment for the heart. Where Angels Tread. The Unseen Realms of God. Available on Amazon.com and wherever books are sold. Alabaster Box Ministries. Linda Casimir. Go and get it right. Or if you're blessed, we allow the Holy Spirit to restrain you from acting out. Still pick it apart and learn. Find a lesson in it. That's one thing I always try to do in everything. Find the lesson, Linda. I always say that to myself. What's the lesson in that, Linda? Pick it apart. Find the lesson alone because that's wisdom no matter what the situation find a lesson in it Linda and use it to get stronger like Lionel you were saying you first start off with 50 pounds then you go to 60 pounds finding the lesson is like that you're adding on those what do you call the things you add on on the, on the thing right. You are on the weights. You're finding the lessons. You, you're testing yourself. You're testing yourself. You're finding the lessons. You're learning what you need to learn. So you can keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So I'm grateful for yesterday. I'm truly thankful. Truly grateful for yesterday. Truly grateful. And like I said, this is somebody that don't normally act like this. This is not him. This is not him. He's a very jovial, funny, always make cracking jokes person. You know? So. I learned. Anyone have anything they want to add? Everybody good? Mm -hmm. let's walk away tonight a little wiser so when we go into the world brothers and sisters you have to interact with other human beings it's not always going to be easy it's not always going to be fun but learn the lesson in every interaction or every reaction in all that you do Amen. 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 So, we want to thank you all for joining us for another episode of Iron Shop and Iron. We hope you enjoyed this conversation about wisdom, getting wisdom, understanding and knowledge, learning how to apply it to your situations, especially those that catches you off guard more than anything else, the ones that catches you off guard. Learn how to apply wisdom that comes from God, not the wisdom of this world. 
but the wisdom that comes from God. Because the wisdom from him comes with compassion. It comes with love and patience and peace. The wisdom of this world don't come with none of that. It's crafty. It's evil. It's wicked. You don't want none of that. Not if you're trying to live a godly life and follow after the Lord and do what is right as a follower of Jesus Christ. So we want to thank you all for joining us. We wish you a wonderful coming week. Thank you, panels, for joining me and for your opinions and your, your thought processes. It was, a, again, another very, very good conversation. And we're going to close off with the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you his peace. So we wish you all the very best this week. Be safe, Father. We live for the families, Lord God, in Texas. We are broken over this, Lord. Our hearts as parents and grandparents. Oh. It's, it's so overwhelming that this, this kind of evil walk in the streets of this nation. We pray, Father God, that you in your mighty wisdom and understanding, eradicate this world of every illegal, unclean, dark spirit. Cast them, and even the legal spirits that are here because men gave them entrance. Anything that's not from the kingdom of God, cast them out of this world. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let your righteousness cover the earth as the waters cover the seas lord let your justice cover the earth cover this nation with your justice your righteousness oh god this we ask in the name of jesus christ amen amen, amen. amen. all right team say you good night and then we out Everybody have a good night. Have a great week. Good night, everybody. Have a blessed and good week. Bye, everyone. Good night. Happy Memorial Day. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yes. Yes. That's only in America, though. Happy okay. Memorial Day to all our soldiers. We thank you for your service. Okay. And soldiers throughout the earth, we thank you for your service to your country as well. So until next week, someone said something? Yeah, I'm going to tell you Memorial Day is more for the fallen soldiers. Ah, uh, for the fallen soldiers. Yeah, independent, no, uh, not independent, what is it? Um, Fourth of July. Uh, huh? Veterans Day. Veterans Day. Veterans Day, Veterans Day. is the one you don't honor them. Oh, Veteran Day for the living soldiers. But for the families of the fallen soldiers, we thank you for the greatest sacrifice human beings could ever give. Thank you from the depths of our heart for this nation and all the nations of the world where their sons and their daughters lay fallen for the good of their nation. We pray the peace and the oil of healing of the Holy Spirit on your wounds and on your pain and on your hurt. So as a team, we thank you. We bless you. Have a wonderful evening and join us next week for another episode of there we go. <laughs> missed it last week. Oh, Annie, yeah, but Annie, Annie brought it up. Annie brought, Annie it, brought it, up. it up. I heard her. I heard her. I gotta watch myself. <laughs> you started something, girl.